How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the Multipressor plugin. Super tight, you know what I'm saying? So, let's get right into it. Before getting into exactly what all these buttons do, let's talk about the Multipressor in general. There are going to be four distinct channels, as you could probably guess from there being one, two, three, and four inside of the Multipressor. Each of these channels are going to have a compressor and an expander on them. And these channels are going to be only working on a specific frequency range. So why is there an expander and a compressor on the exact same channel? Let's think about this for a second. A compressor takes a signal with a set threshold. Anything above that threshold is going to be compressed by a certain ratio. This means that the volume of the track at the end is going to be lower than before. Gain out, gain in is supposed to be gain out, so we need to increase the overall gain of that track. When you do this, you increase the noise floor of that track, or in this case, a certain frequency range. When you do that, that you just you need a plugin like the expander to get rid of that uh, noise floor. And so the expander, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a noise gate that has rounded edges. It's uh, it's the opposite of a compressor. If the signal drops below that threshold, then it will start. Um, decreasing the volume of that track to a certain ratio. Um, if you need want to learn more about the compressor or the expander, I'm not going to go into mostly what the ratio attack and release is, any of that stuff. If you want to go learn that, I have tutorials on both of those, so go check those out. I'll just post the link over here. Check them out. So, back to what I was talking about. So at the top in the graphical interface, we can set the crossover between the two channels. And this is nice because we can set the frequency ranges, the exact frequency ranges that each channel works on. Also, you can set the gain in this user or in this interface up here at the top. So you have the crossover being able to edit and the gain makeup being able to edit. Down at the bottom, you can see this bar, and basically what happens is, I'll just play the song here. You can see for each channel, how the, the overall volume of that channel. So you can actually go in and set the threshold of the compressor and the expander exactly how you want it, um, just looking at the volume on that channel. It's just very nice. Also, you can turn off these channels as you like. Um, if you didn't want four, you can use less, basically. So there's that as well. And then you can solo each channel. So if I were to play this song, you can solo, you can um, zoom in, basically just focus on this one channel. So you can set the attack and release and ratio exactly how you want it, and you can actually hear what's going on. So I, I used that solo button all the time if when I'm working with this. Okay. So I'm not going to go into exactly what all the compressor does, the settings do, and the expander ex, uh, settings does. Um, I just don't want to repeat myself. Go check those, those other tutorials. Um, but the next part of this tutorial is basically me talking about why the multipressor is used on the output track most of the times and uh, how it's used in mastering. Okay, so as you can see, this is going to be chilling on my output. Now check it out. This song isn't a full song by no means. I haven't even really mixed this to any extent. You can see there's not even any EQ on these tracks. There's no bass guitar, no vocals, no anything. Um, so just take this for how what it is. Okay, just uh, just kind of a, an example. Let's talk about why this is always on the output for mastering. Obviously, for mastering, you need to compress the track a lot. So we need to use some sort of compression on that final output. But why do we use a multipressor instead of a compressor? And it is because we have we are able to split up the frequency range. So we can compress these differently. And it turns out we do need to compress them differently. The left or the low and high frequency ranges are going to be needed to compress more because the transients are going to be the difference in the transients are going to be larger than in the center two channels. Okay, so think about this. In the low, you're going to have your kick, your bass, um, 
and it's just not going to be too much, too full of a ton of different instruments because hopefully if you went through your mixing, you've low passed, um, or you've you know you did your low pass and your high pass and whatever to your tracks. So there shouldn't be very much living in the low end and also in the high end. So what you need to do is compress these more because if you leave them alone when you start limiting your track, this will create your bass drums and your cymbals, stuff like this, to compress your whole mix. And that's not what you want by any means. So compression of the outer two regions are going to be higher than the center two regions. Your instruments, a lot of your instruments, a lot of the sound is going to be located in those two center two center regions and uh, so the volume is going to stay about um, s the same over the whole time but there's still going to be transient so obviously we still have to compress so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this song and I'm going to be editing two things compressor threshold and gain that's all I'm going to be doing I'm not going to be working with attack or release or ratio um, you obviously should be working with these uh, I'm just not just for the sake of time and uh, understanding here. So uh, let's get right into it. I'll just kind of go and just kind of talk as I go and hopefully we'll get this get this going, you know what I'm saying? So more compression on this channel. So I'm going to drop this compressor threshold to a certain rate. That's sounds it looks like a lot of uh, compression there in that channel so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the gain up until the blue is floating around even or zero decibels alright so that looks good right there then I'm going to move on to the next channel increase the gain And then this region needs to be compressed more, like I was saying, so um, you can see that the amount of compression correlates to how much gain I'm adding back into the track, because we want each of these channels to be floating around even. Because think about it, you've, we've spent so much time up to this point working with mixing and getting our song sounding the way we want it, so why would we go into this plugin and start messing with the different frequencies and at in in the end, what you're doing is you're mix missing you're messing up your mix that you've worked so hard on. So just make sure that it's a transparent plugin. Volume in is volume out, and all frequencies are going to be nearly the same um, from before to after. Obviously, what you're doing is compressing and uh, pushing up some of the frequencies and some of the subtleties in the music. Uh, so there, it's it is going to be not transparent, but in general, if you're going to be looking at it, but just you, you you need to have it flowing around even. That's the whole point of what I'm talking about here. So uh, that that's really all I wanted to share with you today. If you have any questions, uh, please hit me up in the comments in a message. I, I would love to talk with you about them. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe, like a freaking boss. I, f I almost forgot that. I can't believe I, f I can't believe. It. Anyway, guys, have a great day. See ya.